Hello, good afternoon. I am super excited to be here. This is my first SIGGRAPH speech. Uh, I've been coming to SIGGRAPH since 2007. Uh, so this is a huge honor. Um, I'm so glad to share it with you. Um, I'm a little giddy, so uh, really excited. Um, in 2007, when I first came to SIGGRAPH, uh, I came from the East Coast. I was at School of Visual Arts, and um, I was in grad school there. And 12 years later, here we are in Los Angeles. It's the city I call home, home of the beautiful Hollywood Hills, home of the Hollywood sign, and home of the Hollywood stars. I bet you thought it was a different star, but it's these stars. These stars are the night sky over Los Angeles. And specifically, these stars are the night sky over Griffith Observatory. Griffith Observatory and Friends of the Observatory is a joint partnership that has brought together uh, a new planetarium show, as Sarah mentioned. Uh, and uh, I am one of two producers. The other producer is here in the room. His name is Bob Nemack. And one of our executive producers is here as well, Camille Lombardo. Uh, Signs of Life is a new 35-minute planetarium show. It premieres next year in May of 2020, around this time. So we're a little bit shy of a year out. But first, I want to tell you a little bit about Griffith Observatory. If you haven't been there, has anyone been to Griffith Observatory? Yeah. Uh, it is a historic landmark of Los Angeles, uh, established in 1935. We get about 1.6 million visitors a year. It is owned and operated by the City of Los Angeles and the Department of Recreation and Parks. And the mission of Griffith Observatory is to inspire everyone to observe, ponder, and understand the sky. And as many uh, hands that went up uh, uh, when uh, the gentleman from Lenovo asked how many educators were in the room. Uh, I think I'm sharing this with you as educators. Um, I believe there's a part of you that inspires your students uh, to observe, ponder, and to understand. It's also what Griffith Observatory does as an educational institution. Uh, we inspire the citizens, of, the citizens of Los Angeles to observe, ponder, and understand. And visitors from all around the world speaking many, many languages. Uh, we can all speak the language of science, of the cosmos. Now it's a tall order to inspire, ponder, and uh, give that kind of feeling of awe to people uh, all around the world. So it's much easier said than done in a mission statement, of course. Uh, but what better tools to have than to do it than art, science, and the cosmos. I feel really lucky to be able to have these three tools. This is some of the best material that you could have when you want to inspire people. But the cosmos are really big. So where do we start? Uh, let's start in the planetarium. The planetarium at Griffith Observatory is a state-of-the-art facility. It uh, has a 76-foot immersive dome. When you walk into this space, it is overwhelming and breath will leave you breathless. Uh, it is, uses 8K projection at 60 frames a second and uh, has 28.2 surround sound. But there's two things that make it really, really special. And one of those is that there is a live performer that presents every single show at the observatory. And the second thing that makes it really special, and I'm going to geek out on you for a second here, is the Zeiss Universarium Mark IX star projector. This star projector is like no other in the world. There aren't that many that are in use. But here at Griffith Observatory, it elevates from the center of the planetarium during the show. And if you haven't ever seen a dark sky, if you've lived in urban cities most of your life with a lot of light pollution, this is as good as it gets. The optics on the star projector are stellar. But the star projector is only one visual component of the show. 
back in the planetarium, we have video that supplements and helps to tell our story. To create this video uh, and project it into the 76-foot dome, we use six projectors that blend 24 image channels to create a dome master, which is what you see here into one seamless image. So if you imagine taking this dome master and kind of putting it over your head like an umbrella, this is the image format that we create in order to project it into the planetarium. This is an image from our show, our new show. And you may ask, how in the world did you say 8K? How are you going to render about at 60 frames a second, 120,000 8K dome masters. We asked ourselves that question, and we said we have to create an animation studio to do it. This is our animation studio. We call the Satellite Studio. Uh, it uh, was uh, there was a space that the observatory had that was renovated, and um, uh, we moved in about. Uh, two and a half years ago. We have a mini moon. This mini moon is a fraction the size of the Samuel Ocean Planetarium. It's about 15 feet wide. But we also knew we were going to need a lot of machine power uh, to render these images and that many, and a lot of talented people. This is our team, and a lot of science advisors, and a lot of technical partners. Our technical partners, such as the Foundry, have been invaluable to us, uh, starting out, building a pipeline, building a team. One of the things that we needed were the software, as most of you know in this room, that was available to us as a nonprofit. With all of this, we needed to build a nurturing, creative environment. I'm going to skip a slide and go back there, sorry. Uh, so I said we were about a year out. We're currently in the throes of production. If anyone uh, here has been in production or uh, has sent their students to production um, or had a kitchen rebuilt in your house or something like that, you know what it's like to be in the middle of it. Um, you've planned, you've prepped. Uh, there's a, a lot of things that you didn't plan for, that you didn't prep for, but hopefully uh, you uh, have a great team. Uh, I think as educators, creating an environment uh, that students are able to fail and are able to ask questions uh, by the time they get to a studio, that they're working together, they feel comfortable to collaborate. And the collaboration is what really makes great images come out in the end. So we're putting out final frames in our show, and I want to share one with you. Uh, this is a frame we call Sat 10, is the name of the shot. And uh, this is a uh, preview uh, from our production tracking software, Shotgun. Uh, this is a compressed dome master that you're seeing here. Uh, and so I've prepared an image for us to look at a little closer. This is uh, hot off the press, first time uh, that anyone is seeing this image, uh, especially for you guys, first here at SIGGRAPH. And uh, so what you might recognize is Saturn. Uh, we're out in our solar system. But what you might not recognize in the foreground is Enceladus. Enceladus is a moon of Saturn. And as we say in the show, Saturn has dozens of moons. And one of them is putting on a show that grabbed NASA's attention. When the Cassini Explorer flew past the icy moon Enceladus, Enceladus, it photographed jets of water, jets of water spraying into space, and discovered that they were laced with complex organic compounds. This tiny moon seemed so habitable that at the end of Cassini's mission, NASA created a spacecraft, crashed a spacecraft, excuse me, to prevent contaminating Enceladus with any hitchhiking Earth microbes. The story of Signs of Life will lead you on an adventure throughout the universe. And we as the creators have a responsibility and as educators to present scientifically accurate data. So as an interesting part of this image, we're not in this 76-foot dome. I want to zoom into the image to show you how we do that. 
I'm just going to zoom into this upper left portion of the image. And you can see two crescent-shaped brighter lights. Those are accurately placed two moons of Saturn. This is Titan and Dione. This is how we live up to the mission of Griffith Observatory by inspiring everyone to observe, ponder, and understand the sky. We take what we know that is creative about art, what we've learned about science, combine them together and present them to the public in an entertaining way. As our show concludes, we learn that life is the real marvel of the universe. And the iron in our blood, the calcium in our bones were made in the stars. And every atom in our DNA is a product of nearly 14 billion years of cosmic evolution. And that's the story that's written in the sky, this sky. It's not a story about aliens. It's not a story about if we're alone, although we might speculate a bit. It's really a story about what it took to put life into the universe. I want to thank you all for being here and thank the Foundry and SIGGRAPH for having us uh, providing this platform. And I hope you'll come and see Signs of Life, new planetarium show at Griffith Observatory. Thank you.